Welcome back chums to a new Cyberpunk 2077 mod list. We have a lot of interesting mods to cover from some tweaks, new vehicles, clothing pieces and more. New vehicles have been dominating the scene lately so it's not a surprise we will cover a lot of them today so let's begin. First mod on the list is Environment Texture Overhaul, which enhances and increases the fidelity of a lot of materials in the world, especially when it comes to concrete or asphalt on the roads. We can even see some differences in the dirt and outside in the Badlands. So far it's been very friendly on performance and it's worth checking out being that you have 2K and 4K versions available. Even though the visual quality of Cyberpunk is already pretty good, in the case you want to take it to a next level I recommend this one because it's really well done and definitely one of the must check mods lately. When it comes to vehicles, as I said, modders have been very active and we'll start with Shelby Cobra. Car itself from the visual side looks very impressive with high resolution and quality materials. Inside of vehicles we see it's pretty as much as you would expect, you know, from this vehicle in general, and driving it through Night City was fun. Handling and overall tune of the car is good with a nice start where you can even catch a burnout or drift. Next up we have Ford Mustang Legendary Customs Tune, which is really cool considering I like using it for racing and because of the livery it fits in really well. Quality, again, of the materials is nice and more importantly is that it's handling itself well and with a few other tweak mods like for example Gripped Up or Drift mod, it can really become something special. Overall, great car, definitely and highly recommend getting this one. Another vehicle I want to cover is Mazda RX-7 Magic. One of the things which really impressed me are the sounds, its top-notch acceleration and handling is good, where it can use it for races as well. Maybe in some parts it can be a little bit too fast but nothing you cannot control since, you know, once you get used to it it becomes even better. Plus you have these wild taillights as a bonus. Now we are going for a more luxury car and that's the Ferrari Daytona. Overall the outside is impressive being it's an impressive car IRL but it also drives really well and I like to include more cabriolets in my garage because it feels good to drive them in this game. In the follow up they really need to add more cabriolets in general, I mean it also handles and sounds great as well. Next up we have a more grounded but still tuned vehicle and that's Opel Corsa. I also believe that this car mod is a replica of a real project but overall it looks really cool if you wanted a smaller but very well tuned car when it comes to acceleration and handling. You can also open up the trunk and the front to take a closer look at the engine itself, I mean the details are definitely there and it seems that this mod is definitely a passion project. I also had to include another classic muscle and that's the Dodge Charger that also has some nice decals from the game making it a bit more lore friendly for people who want to keep their game like that. It handles and sounds equally good so give it a chance. Now since Ferraris are a common sight in the game modding community, I also included a Ferrari Puro Sangue. Uh, materials from the interior and exterior look nice and handling is pretty good. Also, it goes along with more of these, how would I say, high quality, expensive luxury vehicles in case you want to mod your game in that way. And the last vehicle for today, or well a nice collection, is the Nissan Skyline Itasha Edition, where you can choose from a wide variety of different liveries and colors. Because this is a add-on to Nissan Skyline mod, you can also expect some nice handling and top speed from the car we already covered. You can even use it in races, which I highly recommend because, well, it looks like it's you know, racing ready. And because modders can edit SFX sounds of vehicles they add, this means that you will have a very cool feeling driving it as you let the turbine and engine do its job. Now you probably notice that in a lot of my vehicles gameplay which you are seeing that there is some inertia and the visibility is better. Well you can achieve that with the driving first person camera tweaks mode that so far has been working really well. It does have some clipping issues from time to time but that's mostly on custom vehicles but when it comes to you know in game vehicles it was pretty alright. But overall it has been a very interesting experience. 
I do recommend getting the toned down version of the mod because I use it here in this gameplay and I was happy with you know the result. Although you can test out the original version, see how it feels, but you can also play around with it, tune it a bit more to your liking. But since visibility from the vehicles is not that good in Cyberpunk for the first person, try this one and see if it works for you. Next up we have a new weapon mod called Kronos. This is a light machine gun that can also, if you charge it by aiming down the sights, can fire incendiary rounds, but at the cost of you taking damage as well because it sets you on fire. I think this is a really nice weapon in case you want to have a character that potentially has this penalty from a weapon, where at the same time you deal insane damage. Overall recommend downloading this one. Now this next mod is a bit older, but recently it has received an update or well expansion enhancing it even more, and that's the crowd scanner mod. As you can see when I scan an NPC it gives me some of their background, some traits, weaknesses and goes along really well with the lore of the game. It gives give some nice, you know, information here and there, even though, you know, you will get some funny comments as well and maybe some things will be repeating, but look, the mod itself is very good and it kind of fits the game. And for this one, of course, you need the original and the expansion mod. I will leave both links below as always. Smooth Movement is a mod I have been testing for a bit now, where it adds more inertia to your movement as you can see by me going left and right and dashing as well. The flow is a little bit different because you of course add that inertia into your movement and so far I have been very happy with it, it's definitely worth checking out and testing in case you're using dashing a lot to smooth it out because this mod definitely does that and I noticed that some of the differences for example when I run and dash and jump and dash is definitely smoother. Next mod is an expansion to Kabuki Gun Range, adding moving targets and even giving you time of 60 seconds to hit as many targets as possible to get the best score. It's a nice role-playing immersion mod which I recommend. All you need to do when you install it is to go to Kabuki Market and head over to the gun shop where you actually get to the range, but uh, it's been very fun so far. Ricochet Redux is under mod I wanted to talk about for a bit now because I like how it works and I've been testing it for a while. Generally Ricochet is not used that often by people and is relatively situational but this mod makes it a lot easier to see the pathing and where the bullet will hit, you know, by properly highlighting the enemy. Overall I'm very happy with it in my gameplay and so far I've been using it for quite a while in my latest playthrough so I recommend checking it out. Another mod which I really recommend is Prem Scopes mod. This mod actually helps out a lot because it removes the tint and a lot of unnecessary things from blocking your vision when you're aiming down the sights with different scopes in this game. Honestly, from time to time having some overlay over the scope was causing some issues, especially if I'm playing in a much darker environment or fighting enemies inside some interiors. But with this mod it became a lot easier and honestly it's a very nice addition if you want to change up your scopes to look a little bit more better and at the same time that you can see better. Now before we move on to clothing mods, I wanted to cover Nova Rain mod which changes the effect of rain even creating some puddles here and there to enhance the atmosphere really well. If you combine this with a nice LUTs and better textures mod you can really push this game to its limits as well as your GPU of course but it's well worth it and the rain effects and how it generally looks atmosphere wise is amazing. Moving on to new outfits and clothing pieces, the first on the list is Grunge Outfit Pack by VG and Lost in the Cave. This collaboration brings us more grounded and normal clothing because most of my previous clothing mods were combat and tactical oriented. While this is more of your casual wear and you can combine this with, you know, with this or maybe add it to some different outfits or something like that for it to work really nicely. but. Overall, the quality is insane and the materials look really nice, so definitely get this one. Next mod is also for all of the Mass Effect fans, because Flotilla Armor, aka the Migrant Fleet, suit has made it into Cyberpunk 2077. It's very detailed and fits the character well, of course if you wanted to go for something more experimental, or maybe you are nostalgic for Tali. Speaking of customization, next mod on the list is Bayonetta 2 hairstyle, which replaces hair option 31 in case you wanted some extra hair options or maybe you're going for that look. 
This also pairs well with another mod I heard people ask for and that's actual black hair color. Well in that case Vesna has you sorted out with her hair color mod. And just like the mod before it, it replaces the carbon hair color to actually pitch black color. Gun holsters are also a very popular mod so far and if you look from the release of the game and there is a new one which is the latex version of the mod so if you wanted your V to look more tactical or well it goes along with your character you can get this one. Maybe some of the weapons are not that high quality but to be honest if you're doing this for photo mode or something else or just for gameplay you won't even notice it. And the last on the list is also the French Secretary outfit pack that pairs very nicely with the gun holster, that's also one of the reasons I have it in this video, in case you're going for a more corpo V or you want your V to look the part. Quality of materials and the outfit is as always great, and I also recommend the shop for the virtual atelier along with it so you don't have to bother with all of the console codes and have ability to buy this a lot more, how would I say, lore friendly. And that's all of the mods for this video, if you enjoyed this click that like and subscribe button for more because I will be covering all of the future mods that come up and join our discord and twitter for all of the latest updates or if you have modding questions. Thank you for your support so far on my previous videos and my older videos as well, the overall support in general has been amazing so thank you so much for this and also huge thanks to my current patreon supporters and as always stay classy everyone, bye bye.